Hello everyone, uh, K Kim here from the Traders Club and you know I just finished live midweek update uh, that was live event that I just finished today and uh, it, it was hour and a half and there's a lot of things we talked about but for for you guys for you guys who are watching at home for YouTube uh, YouTube viewers and people you guys watching people you guys were not able to um, you know uh, attend my event I decided to make a much smaller version shorter version of that midweek update and just kind of let you guys know what we talked about the just a sense of it the the the, the, the seed some the center of you know what we talked about on uh, on today's meeting so i know i i, I didn't want to put out hour and a half a video on youtube instead I, I just thought i'll just put that into maybe like a 10 15 minutes video talking about the s p 500 on the indices and then maybe a few stocks so let's 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 do that so looking at the S&P 500 here, as you can see, we're looking at spider or daily chart. This was important level that we've been talking about. Again, this was a horizon. Again, first of all, that round number, right? 200 on spider, 2000 level on S&P 500 index. This was important level of pivot. Why? Because again, this is a level that was coinciding with the what? Horizontal pivot level, right? This was a level we saw a lot of resistance, a lot of sellers back in, you know, September uh, 17th. And then this was back in, you know, December 18th. We saw a lot of supporters coming in, a lot of buyers in that vicinity and then we saw a little bit of a you know hecticness here just about a week ago and that's the level was that was coinciding with this downtrend resistance again not to mention this was a 61.8 percent retracements on that you're not seeing if you measure here here with your Fibonacci tool this is 61.8 percent which is a last level of a retracement zone right so again that 200 level is a big deal so this is a level that we needed the buyers needed to conquer right so obviously on what today's what Wednesday this is what happened Wednesday this was Tuesday and Monday so last Friday we thrust above this level of resistance I think at that point at least in the minor term bulls have gained that confidence have gained that control and was able to you know thrust higher today i you know i, I really don't think it has anything to do with what the fed had to say about it today in, in, in their in their you know press conference it was that buyers have already gained certain momentum here and they've been gaining momentum since what since early February here. So obviously we're in a minor term uptrend and uh, with a little bit of bull flag happening last few days, today we're just seeing a fru fru fruition of that bull flag happening with the, uh, with the, you know, positive, with the, you know, uh, market acting, behaving in a positive way with the press conference uh, from the uh, feds there. And again, I, I really don't think there there's anything that they, what they said was reacting in a positive way. I think it was more of that momentum that the buyers were able to gather from last several weeks here. It's interesting to note that when you look at S&P 500 index itself, this downtrend resistance actually was hindering this move last few days. It's a little bit different. So there's a nuances happening here with the spider and S&P 500 it's interesting to know that on the S&P 500 index itself we are actually now just breaking above that resistance and again the 2000 level was important we thrust above that on Friday and today we're just uh, you know highlighting or creating uh, you know getting above this resistance so what's the next level of resistance let's go back to spider here Next level resistance level is this. 207 is important resistance level that it, it, it last time was not able to go through or get above this level. So that I, I have a feeling they wanna get there pretty quickly here. But again, we did just fill this gap. You see this gap right here, the gap was open. We just feel that many times when the gap gets filled, it can act as instant resistance. So let's say if we start to fall over from this point on, I think then you know what you would watch is that 20 MA or that 50 MA. We may come back down to retest that 200 uh, level again. If we can aim to find some buyers and we may create that higher low, and then we may throw us higher about 207.36 level. It's also, I think the really, really important level that we need to watch is this downtrend resistance because last few times the buyers really, really tried hard to get above this resistance. You can see we tried it here, here, and failed. And when they failed, they failed miserably and the bears came out quickly. It took only three, four days for the bear to do this kind of damage. And then buyers cultivated what we call a double bottom reversal uh, pattern there and then we got it back up and then buyers tried it one more time 
to 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 break above this resistance they try to hear and was not able to do so and tried it again and again and again and then we started cultivating the lower highs there with the lower lows in the minor term here lower lows there and then just was not able to break above and how fast the bears brought it down again and then it's interesting to note that we threw another double bottom this is a neckline we also talked about I've been talking about the bullish divergence that we have on MACD. I've been talking about there's a clandestine buyers here. And once we got above this neckline and above that 50 MA, we were able to thrust higher. We got back to resistance. So now we're getting back at it. So when we get to this point again in this resistance level, this is a level to watch. Again, this is because, because we got a horizontal level 207, 208 level. And I think once we get there, it may take a week or may take two to three weeks. But once we get there, if the buyers struggle to break above, of that you, you gotta be careful because I think if we start to struggle here and we start to create the cultivate the lower high again then there might be some big downturn again but if we do start falling over what you want to watch is that you want to watch the 200 level and if we start to get up here what we should what you could do to find potential level support is gauge your Fibonacci here to here and see where the Fibonacci retracement zones are and those two levels could potentially give you the support levels there on the S&P 500 again as far as the sentiment is concerned minor term we got bullish sentiment going on there again what I've been talking about in the today's live midweek update is that I don't like the straight up move is straight up move is actually pretty vulnerable action from the buyers because last time when we had a straight up, up move it just was not able to really you know thrust higher because it didn't have enough that that cultivation of intermediate to higher low what you want to see really if this was a perfect world i really like rather see more of a solid ground like more solid stepping stone type of deal where it creates the intermediate to higher low then i believe that we can aim to thrust higher but because we just kind of pretty much went straight up we don't have that intermediate term higher low. Inter again, intermediate term higher low being something like this. I think that if this thing keeps going higher, when we get here, we're probably gonna fall over. The question would be if we fall over, are we gonna able to then create a higher low and then continue higher, or are we gonna get back up here and we just gonna we just gonna see another tankage. And if we do see another tankage, and if that 200 and 193 level cannot able to hold, then what you could expect is this market getting into this falling channel type of deal. And this is the where the market is gonna get into this uh this 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 range bound, you know, this 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 lower low lower high, but we're not straight diving. What we are seeing is we're gonna what we could see is we could see this up and down movement, what we call in a falling channel boundary. If that happens happens this could make a lot of investors very frustrating and, and, and this could make this market continue to be volatile and in the in the, in the perspective of fear so again we don't know it until how it so it's very very important how it deals with this resistance level and we can go from there quickly i want to look at apple and uh see where we're at apple you know obviously you know, what we talked about is an apple the next level of resistance is 11 and 11.34 and 108.80. Obviously something we talked about is that there was a bullish divergence here, something we I've been talking about in the videos, there's a clandestine buyers. And these clandestine buyers are not always a long term, they're a short term because they want to see if something is happening. And when something did happen, more supporters coming in. You know, it, just, just supporting that bullish divergence. And it was an important support level as well. You can see this at level act as it has been acting as strong support. Not only that, we had a weekly, weekly 200 SMA acting as support i remember i wrote an article about apple uh talking about watch this weekly 200 estimate level there because it acted as strong support here this was back in 2000 late 2008 and it was acting as strong support back in mid 2013 or so and then today uh it is currently acting as support in the last several weeks that's important also you can see these oscillators are crossing back up those are good signals but uh, it's still not enough we still need more from apple obviously we still have this downtrend resistance going on here so what you want to see is actually as far as the time frame because we just talked about spider spider getting into certain resistance level so i think that by the time spider start to move higher apple will probably follow that but then once we meet with this resistance level again that time frame is pretty similar to where the s spider is going to hit that resistance remember we talked about the resistance coming down so once we get up here spider get up here you know apple get up here and if the market starts to fall over, I would have to say that then Apple probably gonna fall over with it. 
But let's say if we start hang around here, if the a, if the apple was able to grab that higher low and create that higher high for the first time, I think then we can able to achieve about 122, 123, 124 level here. Again, only if we can able to get above this resistance. So that's that's an important level. I think that that resistance that you're seeing on this apple chart, that's probably the demon that the you know, buyer's demon. Because last time we hit this level, we hit it twice and was not able to get above that level. We tanked. We tanked. So there's a lot of sellers in that vicinity. So that's definitely, that's definitely level to watch and we'll follow up on that level uh, maybe next week. Uh, on the last style, let's see, let's, uh, let's, look at, let's look at Tesla and then I'll just end this video here. Something that, you know, that I talk a lot about is how this market likes to trap everybody. It, it likes to make money on both sides. What I mean by that is this, you know, you see this level, this is important support level. You see how important this level is. This level is must hold level. We completely break through this level. And this is where everybody's stop is getting taken out. Long-term trader, short-term trader, the swing trader, precision trader, investors, let most of their stop is below this level. And most new trade, like most unseasoned technical traders, because they just learn how to look at support and resistance, but they really don't know how to look at psychology of this market. So what happens is, okay, well, this is a very, very important support, so I'm gonna put my you know stops just below that, and then you get it gets taken out. So what happens is in this vicinity below. Below 178 and one, you know, 150 ish area, a lot of people, a lot of people's, you know, stops are taken out, and then a lot of people are shorting or, or you know, buying puts or shorting. They're just flipping over, and then what does it have? What does the market does? Market just goes, just completely reverse on them, and then just does this V shape higher. You see that? This is what we call classic bear trap. Right, this market a lot of times do stuff like this. It does it in the opposite direction as well, right? This was uh, resistance. We get above that, and then it just tanks, right? And, and again, it happens over and over again. This is a resistance level here. You can see that this is a prior resistance. We get above that. Most people think that this is gonna continue higher, and then it gets trapped. This market loves trap people, right? So not only it's, it's important that you understand support and resistance and pivot levels, but it's also important you understand the psychology of this market and able to see these things. But as far as you know, minor term is concerned, I've obviously seen a lot of momentum here. Again, these V shapes very very difficult to forecast because you never know if it's just going to be a V-shape and complete reversal or if it's going to be V-shaping higher and then it creates a lower high and then, you know, honor this resistance. Because we're right at the resistance here, 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 here. So we're at lower highs and lower lows. So is this going to be continue higher, get to the resistance level and then fall over or is just going to be complete reversal? See, that's the thing about V-shape is that it's very, very difficult to predict what's going to happen. But what I can say is this, as far as the downtrend is concerned, we are in the intermediate term downtrend, right? We got the lower highs here and we got the lower lows there. That is a definition of a downtrend, right? But what we have to understand is how can we nullify a downtrend? What we need is at least first step is equal highs, right? Equal highs meaning there's no longer creating lower highs. So what it will do is it will come up here, create equal highs, and then what you want to see is a pullback. So nobody likes to see pullback. The pullback is important because it embraces it. You need to embrace the pullback because it cultivates and creates that higher low. We need that higher low to cultivate, to inaugurate that uptrend, right? So if he pulls back and then creates that higher low for the first time, we can say that now we have for the first time since this downtrend, we got the low, we got the higher low, and it's not higher low, it's not enough. We need that higher high. And this is a vicinity. If we can stay up there, remember you gotta keep in mind there could be traps and head fakes and all this shenanigans that can happen above the resistance. So first step is that you need to call to an equal high. So I wouldn't be so hasty to go long on Tesla right now. What I would say is I, I wanna see a cultivation of higher low because we're still in an intermediate downtrend. And if he falls over, he might not do it exactly. It could be a little bit higher or lower. And then if he cultivates a higher low and then gets up, and create that higher high and stay up. Make sure there's no shenanigan up there. There's no bull trap up there. Then I believe then it's gonna continue and we may see this market uh, Tesla completely reversing. Because a lot of times what the market does or a lot of these stocks do, they will give you that one scare, right? And then it just cre it just it just fakes everybody out, everybody's stunned, every all the bears are dumbfounded. And a lot of times, as far as the psych psychology is concerned, that's when the actually, you know, 
uh, the market, uh, you know, the stocks can turn around. So we got these certain, certain resistance level here to watch. But again, see if if in a perfect world, if 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 we start to see these kind of price action on Tesla, then you can see that price Tesla have reversed. But until then, the reality, the you know, the reality is the tangible data it is. We're just right at the resistance. So that's definitely level to watch because if we start to fall over and may create lower low, then that's we're still in a downtrend. So that's what I got for you guys. Again, I just cramped my hour and a half live midweek update into 15 minute analysis. And in and, and a lot of lot of uh, you know people who attended, they asked uh, questions and a lot of the stocks. So I, I was addressing a lot of questions, things like this. So I'll, I'll do live midweek update again in the future so you can follow me on uh, Twitter, stock tweets, 2K came or my blog, 2 traders called You can sign up there, live midweek update if you want to come in and hang out with me and interact with me. Otherwise, I'll put out these videos more of our, you know, uh, just uh, shorter version videos so you guys can just quickly watch and see where the market is at and just kind of look at few stocks and things. So again, thank you very much for following and uh, I'll follow with you guys on the market maybe next week. Have a great night.